practicing scale exercises is something that we do to gain flexibility and overview of the guitar or whatever instrument that you're playing. But you should also consider the fact that you want to practice scale exercises that are helping build your vocabulary. So you want to practice things that you can immediately use in your solos. Working like this is a lot more efficient and also really something that's going to help you develop a flexible vocabulary and improve your solos. In this video, I'm going to go over five scale exercises and going through this material will not only teach you some really solid building blocks that you can use in your solos, but also how you can start working and developing your own scale exercises that are really going to fit with the kind of vocabulary that you want to add to your solos. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. I'm going to use this way of playing the C major scale to demonstrate how I'm playing the exercises. But in the end, of course, you want to use whatever way of playing scales that you find more useful, more comfortable. And it doesn't really matter. It's not about what kind of scale fingering we're using here. It's really just about how to make these types of exercises. <laughs> This exercise is really sort of a bebop classic. So what's happening is that we're playing the diatonic seventh chord arpeggios, but then they're played as a triplet and I'm adding a chromatic leading note in front of the first note. And that gives me sort of a speeded up eighth note line where I really emphasize the seventh of the arpeggio. And this is something that I was taught this, I think by Barry Harris as an exercise. It's just a general way of practicing something that you're gonna find in a million Charlie Parker. Or at least thousands of bebop solos. It's a great thing to have in your vocabulary and definitely something you want to use in your solos if you want to play something that sounds just a little bit bop inspired. Here I'm using the arpeggio on a C major 7 chord, just using the basic C major 7 arpeggio. And then after this I add a little bit of chromaticism, skip down to the 5th and then up to the 6th, the A, and then just resolve to the E, the third of the chord. This exercise is combining a chromatic enclosure with the basic diatonic triads. So it's kind of coming out of this exercise. So just playing the scale in the basic diatonic triads in root position. And then I'm adding a chromatic enclosure in front of each of those. So for the first note, in this case for the C, I'm adding a chromatic enclosure consisting of a scale tone above and then a chromatic note below. In this case, that's a scale tone as well. So, and then up the triad. Next one's the D minor, so that's first the E, then down to the C sharp, chromatic leading note, and then up the triad, and then through the scale. This lick is using the material from the exercise twice. It's on a C major seven, and the first triad is the E minor triad, so that's the triad from the third of the chord, and we get first the enclosure, so, and then the triad, then some chromaticism, and then moving up and doing the same thing, but then from the triad from the root to the C major. And then ending on the ninth of the chord. Kurt Rosenwinkel uses this way of chaining together two arpeggios quite a lot. You can find examples of him doing this in his solo to Dewey Square and also in the Lazy Bird solo. And it is a great way to get a lot of range into a single line within one bar. So when you practice this in the beginning, I was playing this in a position and that's of course useful to check out. But I think with something that has a range that's as large as this, then you probably also want to play it in other ways and find ways that are easy to execute. And one way to do that would be to play it along the neck like this. Thank you. 
when you play through this exercise, you also need to look at which chord will these two arpeggios fit on. So you kind of need to map the different versions of this exercise to different chords and see how that works. That's also what I'm doing in the lick that's using it. I'm using the exercise on the D minor seven here. And first I'm playing an A minor seven arpeggio. So, and then these two notes are really sort of nicely framing this F so I can play an arpeggio from here. And that's the F major seven. So I'm really clearly spelling out the chord. And then from here, I'm going into some chromaticism on the G seven. And then just tacking the line with really a phrase from the first exercise using the triplet arpeggio on the C major seven. Barry Harris is a great resource if you want to add some bebop sounds and bebop melodies to your playing. And in this exercise, I'm using sort of a simplified version of how he adds chromaticism to scale melodies. So the basic rules that I'm using here are fairly simple. If I'm moving from D to C, then I can add a chromatic lean note in between. So, And if I'm moving from C to B, then there's no chromatic note in between. So I take the scale note that's one step above the C. So. And what I'm doing is that I'm combining those two and turning that into a short chromatic melody moving from D to B. So that would be. This 251 lick is using the exercise right at the beginning. So I'm starting on the third of the D minor chord, the F, and then I'm adding the exercise. So, And then from here, continuing just down uh, an F major triad going to G7. And then from here, I'm also adding one of the previous exercises with the triads and the chromatic enclosure, like this. As you already heard in the first exercise, it makes a lot of sense to combine arpeggios with chromaticism. And in the first exercise, I'm doing that just by adding a chromatic lead note in front of the arpeggio. But we can also add something at the end of the arpeggio, and that's what I'm doing in this exercise. So it's really fairly basic what is happening. I'm playing up the arpeggio, and then I'm moving from the seventh down to the, to the fifth using chromaticism. And in the case of a major seven chord, I can just add half steps in between. When I have a flat seven, I don't have enough notes in between, so I just grab the one below and then resolve. And that goes through the scale like this. Here I'm using the exercise on the D minor seven, just using the D minor seven arpeggio, so. On the G7, I'm also chaining together arpeggios. It's similar to what I did in the Kurt Rosenwinkel exercise, but the first one is a triad. So it's an F major triad, and then a B half diminished arpeggio. And then on the C major seven, I'm using the lick again, the exercise, so. And then just tagging it with these two notes.
I think it's very important that we keep developing our vocabulary and adding new things to it. And if you want some more building blocks, some more of the basic exercises that you can check out in your scales that you can work with and use in the way that I'm talking about exercises in this video, then check out this playlist where I'm going over different types of scale exercises using arpeggios, shell voicings, quartal harmony, all things that are great building blocks for your solos.